Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new subscribers. Thanks for joining us up in here. On this channel here, we like to have a lot of outboard fun and other boatsy, boatsy stuff. Um, boy, if you watch my last couple of videos, I've got this little cute, I've got cutie problems. I've got little, little bitty, bitty, itty bitty cutie problems. We got this little five and one half. Ooh, doggy. It's, uh, it's been sitting, sleeping for probably a couple of decades and it shows. You understand? Um, Had a lot of comments. Um, many of which were thinking right down the, the exact same lines that I've uh, been pondering as the problem problems. Um, people saying your spark's hot but not hot enough. People saying when you started it up after it sitting so long, right when you started it up, maybe it blew a head gasket that was almost ready to go anyway. You know, blew it as it started leaking water into one of the cylinders. Very possible. Had that happen a few years ago with a 30 horse. Um, what else? Um, the thing's not venting. It's not exhausting. Uh, it's the reason why it won't rev up. Though it's sucking air and fuel in through the old garbage radar, it can't push it out. The result might be it won't rev up. People saying something under the mag plate's probably broke. Even though it looks like it's, it's, it's advancing, it's not. Um, a lot of people chimed in, you need to check those reads telling me they had a motor doing very similar things and it ended up being um, a bent or broken reed. Fuel pump. Several people weighed in and said it's the fuel pump. Had two or three engines over the years, did the same thing. Always ended up being the diaphragm and the fuel pump. All those things are very, very possible to be uh, causing this thing to run Rather well at idle, may I, may I say, um, but not rev. So I thought about it in all the comments, and uh, I don't think I saw a comment on there that, that I could read and then go, well, yeah, that could be the problem. That could be the problem. That could be the problem. Yeah, they were all. that. There's the problem. <laughs> they could all be the problem. So we got to find it. In order to do that, we're going to have to look around, sniff around. We're going to have to sniff this problem out. You understand? Um, so what I decided, or how I decided, I decided, um, I'm going to approach it is from the beginning. Just like if I just got it in yesterday and never saw it before. I'm going to do a fax check, we're going to do a compression check, we're going to do another spark check. This time I'll probably pull the actual flywheel before I just went in the little plate. They have a little access plate on top of the flywheel that has three screws. Went in there and just kind of with my little points file, cleaned them up, and I got spark. That's how I'm going to approach it. I'm just going to look at it as like I've never seen the thing before and it was just dropped off here and we're going to go from there. And, and it's going to be one of them. I just dropped it off and the owner says it, it won't rev up and it won't run and he don't know what's wrong with it. That's how I'm going to approach it. So, I'll quit jabbering. Let's get to it. Okay, hopefully you can see the first thing I'm going to do is a compressionis test. You'll understand this. 
I got it in the bottom cylinder and we are on zero. I'm going to give it five good ones. There we go. See what we get, what we get. I got about 90, maybe 88. I'm going to do it again. We're on zero. I'll do each one of them twice. Five good ones. What we get, what we get. Again, right at 90 on the bottom. For a pull start small engine of this vintage, 88, 89, ain't bad. It should definitely run decent on that. Let's put it on the top one. Ah, my compression gauge got hung in my glove. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. Here we go. Getting it now. Okay. We're on the top. We are zero. Five good ones. What we get? What we get? What we get? About eighty. About eighty on the top. Let's try it again. Five good ones. Almost about 82, 83. I think it should run halfway decent on that. For a little small pull start. So, there's our compression test. Now that's with the pull start. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this recoil off here and spin it over with the half Milwaukee so we can spin it over even faster and harder. But the numbers I'm seeing right now, yeah that was loose, um, man. I would think it would run halfway decent on that. I would. So, I'm going to move you back a little bit. Let's put it in the bottom. In the bottom is. Yeah, I mean, basically we're looking at 85, 90. All right, good and tight. I'm on zero. Now I'm going to put the Milwaukee to it. And we'll really spin it over and see what we get for the numbers. No different. Right there at about 88. Yeah. I'm past the 85 mark, so about 87, 88 on the bottom. Let's go to the top. Okay, 
There's a top zero. Sixty, sixty-five, seventy, seventy-five, eighty. About 80 per cylinder. That's not great, especially being turned over with a uh, an electric starter like that. But that's the numbers. And even with that, I think it should run way better than it's doing. Um, what do you think next? The fuel pump? Well, let's do a spark check again. Let me get me a sparky. Let's do a spark spider this time. Just to see if we can see them both fire. And this is a pretty good gap. They'll have to jump on this if they will. We'll see if they will. Okay. Let me put one of my gloves up under there so that you don't get no ground in action. Fold it, keep everything up there. Now let's find a place to hook this to. That is a bolt or a piece of aluminum. That looks like it ought to work right there. All right. Right there is where you should see some spocky action if it's going to do it. Mm -hmm. That is good spark action. I mean, that's jumping a good quarter inch or more on this one. That's good spark. That's all there is to it. That's good spark. I mean, that's, that's a, a, a large gap there for a points engine, and it's jumping that, I mean, it's jumping that strong. It, it, there's not a weak spark there. Just not a weak spark there. Nope. I mean... So, some have said fuel pump. Let me go out and get another one. See if I can get one of the more modern pumps. Uh, I think it'll fit right on there. I'll be back. Okay, so I went out and got this fuel pump here. This style. And there is a little test you can do with these without having to put a vacuum gauge on it and everything. I mean, it'll, I can't say that it's going to tell you 100% that it's good, but it will tell you if it's bad. Um, it's called a suck and blow. And you got your two nipples here. And if you look on the big one, I can blow. And the air comes out. Now, if I suck, nothing. I can't suck nothing through that. Same with the little one. I can't blow, but I can suck. <laughs> suck and blow. <laughs> so, that's what we're going to replace that guy with. With that guy. At least I think it'll fit. Let's see real quick. Will it? Uh, that might get in the way. I don't think it will. But it won't. It won't. I was thinking it might get in the way of the recoil. Let me set that up there. Move all my junk. So there's that. No, it ain't gonna get in the way. Ain't got much room in between the flywheel there, but it'll make it. So that's what we're gonna do. Let me get this one all hooked up. I'll be back. 
There she is with the different fuel pump on it. That's wide open. See the different fuel pump? Runs the same. You see where the cam is and the cam follower. I've tried to adjust it, nothing. That's wide open. No change. saw it when I unhooked that quick connect for the fuel line and let that thing sit there and chunk and chunk and chunk. Um, 
when it ran out of gas, them RPMs shot right up. And there was no question at that point that she was hitting on both cylinders really well and that she is exhausting really well and with what I've done so far on the motor on the cutie see the cutie the chances of two fuel pumps being bad pretty slim and I typically will not salvage a fuel pump and put it out there in my Connex in my fuel pump bin unless it came off a known good engine running engine that had other problems such as you know a rod through the power head bad lower unit and so many other things that I scrapped it out if I know the engine was a running engine I will take the fuel pump and put in my conics or if I can see that the death of the engine was catastrophic I'll save the fuel pump um, so with the old suck and blow test and the way that thing performed when it got leaned out and revved up like it did I'm pretty satisfied with what I've done so far the compression numbers and I do believe when I get this thing straightened out you gotta remember this thing's been setting for I know for over 10 years probably closer to 20 so she's been asleep for a long time I believe those compression numbers will come up a bit but in the 80s for a little five and a half old school pull start motor that ain't bad um, and we could definitely see when it leaned out and ran it it definitely has enough compression to run well so with the fuel pump and again the spark jumping a quarter inch for an old school little engine like this that that's plenty good the spark is good on this motor I, I'm I'm satisfied with what I've done so far that I've ruled out the mag plate the coils the high lead tension leads the spark plug wires the plugs I'm satisfied that it will exhaust well I'm satisfied that the fuel pump is good Could it be a read? Yep, still could be the read. But, with what I've done so far, it's pointing to that garbage raider. Fuel saturationis. You understand us? I speak it in Spanish. Yeah. I'm going to pull that old garbage raider back off there and go through that thing with a fine tooth and comb. I'm going to pay a special attention us, you understand us? I ain't going to say it again. Um, I'm going to pay special attention to those needles, seats, stuff like that. The innards of that carburetor. Um, unfortunately, this one's getting a little long but with the compression test the spark test and so forth and the chug run and then the lean out I think we're making progress we're making progress on this little cutie but this one's probably getting long so I'm gonna wrap it up here and always that's one more hack from Kodiak and thanks for watching more vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.